Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Ilya Zverev, and uh, I love public transportation. When I joined OpenStreetMap in 2010, uh, it was nearly the first thing I met. Like, I uh, added missing bus stops near my house, and then I went to uh, work with route relations, you know, when I joined OpenStreetMap, and this was a pretty large goal. And fixing route relations is pretty easy. You just add uh, bus stops in order, and bus stops are very simple back then, just this tag and nothing else. And the second part of route relations is uh, a highways. Highways which buses use to approach bus stops. So you open JOSM and you select road segments and then you find out that you have to split the next segment at the, at the intersection. So you lose all your selection, split the ways, start selecting again and on the next intersection. Of course you need to split it again. So it was very tedious and frustrating job, but well, I like public transport, so I fixed a couple routes. And uh, after that, I finally opened uh, the wiki and uh, tried to find out how to map public transport properly. At the time, uh, there was uh, a popular schema by Sebastian Schwartz, known as Oxomoa. Uh, it was made by a committee of German mappers, and it looked very promising. Uh, it was based on European standards. It looked, uh, it promised consistency, it promised order in relations and usability. I really liked the schema because, well, it looked orderly. Uh, it made you feel like uh, there is, uh, that you know what you're doing. I like public transport, so I, of course, translated into, into Russian. I didn't stop at 30 kilobytes of the schema. I also uh, write, wrote, written, wrote some tutorials, uh, explained the JOS and public transport plugin, and when the next proposal appeared, I also translated, uh, uh, outlined the differences, and so on. Uh, the proposal was very big. Most people have read it. Uh, almost nobody had researched it. For example, it introduced some things that didn't catch up, like ways for ferries. There are still zero usages of that. But still, it looked great, so I set off to map my bus routes in that proposal. And it turned out not so great, because now for each bus stop you had to add two objects with a lot of tags, and you had to add them to route relations in specific order. Uh, and uh, it was, of course, e e very easy to mess up the order. And more than that, you have to create several route relations for a single route. So it was very, very frustrating, especially for novice like me. So I stepped off and I didn't touch any public transport route again in a few years. So by the time I left my old job, I moved to Moscow, joined MapsMe, did some impossible things with OpenStreetMap for them. And last year, my boss comes to me and says, well, you did a great job on that subway demo on the hackathon, so how about you uh, prepare all the subway networks in the world for MapsMe? Um, yeah. <laughs> so how do you do that? You know, public transport rules and relations. Relations in OpenStreetMap are always broken. So how do you prepare that for an application that's used by millions? Well, when, in my experience, I know that I had to write a validator. A website that shows what's wrong and how can you fix it. And to write a validator, first, you know, uh, you, you should know what is correct and what is wrong. So I studied the wiki, all the wiki pages and subways ever written. And in that research, after that research, I understood one thing, that nobody has used subways in OpenStreetMap for anything but uh, displaying on a static map. For example, 
uh, you should have used subway interchanges. Maybe you switch from M1 to M2 here, uh, or anything. Interchange is where you uh, change stations on subway without leaving uh, the subway network, without passing any tourniquets. And there was no, absolutely no way to map it in OpenStreetMap. It has zero interchanges because there was no tagging for it. Then subway entrances. Of course, we have a tag for subway entrances, but the thing is, it's not a part of public transport schema. So there are stops and platforms and routes, and there are entrances that are completely separate, not linked to stations. And to enter a subway station, you have to know where to go, to, where to enter, what entrance to use. So the obvious candidate to link entrances and stations is stop area relations. But stop areas were not clearly defined in the public transport schema. So uh, people were adding all kinds of things to stop areas. Multiple stations in one stop area, that's okay. For some uh, uh, railway stations in Paris, uh, they seemed to just drop everything they, they could find in stop areas. There were big relations with several thousand members. Like you can select all the, uh, an area of railway station and add to relation. There were footways, there were shops, everything. So I made a wiki page on how to map uh, subways properly. This is it in a nutshell. Looks very complex, but it isn't actually. Uh, and I made this into proposal, uh, this one. It didn't catch, catch up because I made a mistake of uh, wording it like a tutorial like a document that new mappers could use to map up uh, subways. And I copied a lot of stuff from other wiki pages that were already accepted and used, and turned out that uh, mappers in OpenStreetMap do don't like the status quo. They don't like things that are described on other wiki pages. So uh, I had to do something else. I'll get back to that in a moment. And meanwhile, I was writing a validator, a processor that will turn OpenStreetMap data to a data usable by MapsMe. First thing I did was to uh, read Wikipedia and compile a list of all uh, public transport network or subway networks in the world. Uh, by now, there are 191 of them. Uh, you see, number of lines, number of stations, bounding box, and so on and so on. And I wrote a Python script that converted OSM data into a series of uh, object structures, which had everything you might ever want to know about uh, subways, from routes to stops to points where train stops and stations and transfers, so on and so on. And of course, this was, uh, uh, it produced uh, errors and warnings when it compiled the network, so we know what to fix. And I ran this validator on uh, OpenStreetMap, and how many uh, cities had good enough uh, subway networks, it was only three in the whole world. What to do with that? Well, I took my time off everything, and I mapped hard. Like, for three months, I did almost nothing but fixing uh, subway networks. And uh, I had uh, some students help me, and big thanks to Claudius Henriks, uh, uh, the guy who fixed a lot of uh, subway networks all over the world. Not sure if he's here, but thanks to Claudius. And in three months, we released an application with 73 networks. Uh, it was pretty great. All this uh, while the proposal was failing. So uh, by now, there are, uh, I think, 170 networks. Uh, ready for routing, for displaying, for any, everything. So, my boss looked at it, and uh, he told, okay, now, uh, what about other modes of transportation? Like, uh, maybe trams? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> the thing, if we take trams, then why not uh, the whole overground tra uh, transport? Why not? Uh, the thing with overground transport, the first thing, it is simpler. 
while for subway station you have to map platforms, you have to uh, connect subway entrances and stop area relations, and all, the, all this turns into some ball of, of OSM elements. Most, if not all, public uh, overground stops are just one object, like highway bus stop or a railway tram stop. So it's much easier to map and much easier to use. But overground transport is bigger uh, in quantity than subways. Like uh, its uh, number of stops is by two orders of magnitude uh, more than subway stations. Uh, I believe there are more than a million stops you know, uh, over the world. So you can just load it into memory and expect uh, to process it to work well. The simplicity of overground uh, public transport uh, promised me to uh, made me have some ideas on how to uh, make mapping it easier. Not using JOSM and relation editor and, uh, well, uh, that, that's all very complex. Why, when you have something like move it uh, editor, but uh, with open street map, uh, where you can just click on stops, add relation, add them to routes, and be done with it. Uh, this is uh, OSMPT app that was developed last year um, by uh, Google Summer of Code student uh, David. And the work is continued uh, this year by his student. Uh, well, th this is Jungle Bus application, which cannot do any route editing and cannot do anything but edit, add and edit bus stops. But I had an idea how it could be improved to uh, make editing bus routes simpler. Some heuristics and, well, a simple editor to rearrange stops and uh, it will be pretty okay and usable. But the um, thing is, editing stops would be wrong. And why? Because the current public transport schema says that stops are optional, but highways and railways are mandatory. So if you want to make a proper public transport route, you have to uh, add highway segments to split them and uh, to spend this quite substantial amount of time just to making a, uh, uh, making a route relation suitable for rendering, but not for other villages. Yeah, and we had to do something with it. Okay, overground public transport. Uh, what to do with it? I think I had to make a new validator just to see how good the mapping is for overground transport. So I took my railway validator, uh, I mean subway, yeah, and uh, thought how it applies to overground transport. And there is one big difference. For subways, for railways, you have a station node or object. And station node has all the information about uh, railway station. And all other objects like platforms, stop positions, entrances are auxiliary, they're additional. They don't have any station specific information. And bus stops, for example, don't, don't have this structure. Bus stops uh, don't have, uh, on different sides of the road, don't have central node with information. But then uh, I thought, why? even link bus stops on different sides of the road. There are different, different stops. Sometimes they, they have different names, uh, and they have different reference IDs in uh, GTFS kits and so on and so on. So I realized that bus stop, in principle, is the same as a railway station node. It could have all the information about stop, and uh, with that, uh, it links neatly into the scheme I devised for subway stations. But bus sta stops, tram stops, are the same as uh, train and uh, subway stations, if you make this assumption. So all other elements of the schema fit neatly, like uh, joining stops and platforms with a stop area relation, and so on and so on. Like adding interchanges, like adding stop positions, like even entrances for underground tram lines. So I made uh, uh, quickly 
uh, made some fixes to Subway Validator to make a tram validator and ran it on uh, 26 uh, test networks, cities. And it went pretty okay. I even found one city that had uh, 100% good tram network, but then I looked at numbers and it turned out it had uh, zero trams. That's why it, that's why it was 100% good. But uh, with a short script that added uh, stop area relations, uh, the situation got much better. What have I found? Uh, well, uh, stop areas are a mess, and uh, linking platforms to tram stops is very hard. In many cities, this was normal. It's a st stop area that uh, contains everything, uh, like in this case, uh, seven stations, seven different tram stops, but it was used to mark an in interchange. With this stop area, you cannot know uh, which uh, tram stop belongs to which platform. Like, take this platform and what is it? Uh, where is the station or the tram stop node? And we had to fix it. Well, I assume I have to fix it, <laughs> but uh, I would like some help. <laughs> so, uh, last week I published uh, a uh, new public transport proposal. I name it V3, but this was a bad decision. So let's call it refined public transport, uh, which uh, basically makes public transport usable not only for rendering, but for everything. And first and more important thing, that it makes public transport usable for mapping. It uh, doesn't drive, drive away no novice mappers uh, from mapping public transport, because it's not that hard anymore. <laughs> Now you have a public transport route with just highway bus stop nodes, and that's all. You don't have to split highways, you don't have to put stop positions, uh, you just do the most obvious thing. And the routes made in this way uh, are suitable not only for rendering, but also for routing, for analyzing, for converting into GTFS for everything. So there's two wins, and it uh, brings sense to many uh, elements of uh, stations, of routes, that were described very technically, very utilitarian before that. So it's not just physical platforms, it's not just uh, areas, but every element of uh, station, every element of route has its meaning, like uh, station node is most often uh, where people wait. And uh, stop area links specifically station elements, like entrances, platforms, and stops. Yeah, and it, it brings some order into tram stop uh, position. Uh, if you look at wiki discussion page, you'll see there's one little issue left that uh, is not easy to solve, we're thinking of it now. Uh, and it stems from uh, the wish to get away with, uh, with not mapping stop areas. How do you uh, behave? Uh, and uh, with w wishing to have bus stops, tram stops uh, mapped as nodes to simplify processing this. So uh, what do you do when there's platform on the stop and so on and so on? Where do you put your tags? Yeah, so uh, find the proposal on the wiki and read it, or at least look at the pictures. They are pretty self-describing. And uh, don't support the status quo. Do the same thing you, you did when failed meta mapping proposal. Uh, that strive for better public and simpler public transport in OpenStreetMap. And with that, we can make OpenStreetMap usable uh, for anything more than just rendering. Thanks. Thank you very much for the presentation. So any question from the audience?
thank you for your presentation. I just had a question relating to GTFS, and if you were at all inspired, or if not, is there any chance to convert this new uh, way of mapping public transport in OSM to GTFS or vice versa? Uh, well, this public transport scheme will make it different definitely easier to convert uh, data to GTFS and to link OSM data and GTFS data. Uh, maybe requiring just to add GTFS uh, IDs to stops, but nothing more. So uh, what, what it, this does is allowing uh, to build a processor that converts OSM data into a neat structure that can be used together with third-party data, with GTFS, with some uh, proprietary data to mer merge them and to use other elements of OpenStreetMap uh, to better routing. Okay, one question from my side. That is there any way to identify the, I mean, suppose uh, from the metro station mainly we have two exist or entry point. So is there any way to identify that this is the entry point or is this is the exist point as a stop? Similarly, sim, same, I mean, similar for the tram, I mean, subway, because sometimes here, even the, near to this university, we have two stops. One way to, to go one side and just around 100, 200 meter, there's to go another side. So in your proposal, do you have any way to identify this? You can, if you have to go in this direction, you have to go this stop. You have to go in opposite direction, you have to go to the that stop. So is it possible to identify that kind of stop in your this kind of system? Yeah, of course it is possible to identify where, where you have to go to get to uh, any of directions. Uh, and it is better in the new proposal because in the on, old one, for tram stops, you basically map stop positions. In the new one, the, uh, the emphasis is, is put on platforms, on where you actually have to route a user to, to go to wait for a tram. So yeah, of course, it would be more clear, better. Hi. Uh, thank you for trying to make a public transport easier to validate, to map. My question is actually, public transport is always something uh, very complex. So it, do we have enough validation tools? So for example, there are lots of cases when public transport stops don't come by sequence and it's not possible to see on the openstreetmap.org for example and that leads to lots of uh, kind of non-validated uh, data. So I am assuming it's not possible to fix public transport where it will not be validated in some apps or specific websites. Well, this proposal is only the first step. Currently, uh, I've started writing a validator for all public transport of all kinds in OpenStreetMap. Uh, we shall produce uh, structures that you can use in your application, and we can use in MapsMe, and everybody could, I don't know, convert into GTFS, and it will serve as a validator for all public transport. As for edge cases, of course, there are many edge cases with public transport in the world. Uh, well, we'll solve it as it comes. It's not a single proposal to cover everything. It's just a basis for other things to add some details. Like uh, just recently we saw uh, hail and ride rolls for highways and uh, bus routes and uh, uh, rolls for stops like reverse and so on. So. This is a basis for new public transport, but of course we will build upon it uh, for covering edge cases. Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. So we stop here. Thank you.